Windows 10 was supposed to be the last version of Windows ever, indicating that Microsoft would keep updating Windows on a software as a service model. This also makes sense when considering other products like Microsoft 365. Imagine the surprise of the industry then, when rumors started circulating about Windows 11, when a leak of Windows 11 was released, and now with an official release from Microsoft about Windows 11 and its many new features. Let's check out what's new, both by analyzing the video that Microsoft has released, and also by running it on a virtual machine, that same leaked build that I just mentioned. So, let's check it out. In their 25th June 45-minute keynote, Microsoft highlighted the major new changes in Windows 11, including a revamped taskbar, rounded window corners, enhanced transparency effects throughout the system, a better on-screen keyboard for use with touch, a new widgets pane screen panel thingy, enhanced task switching and multiple desktop support, a new Microsoft Store with the ability to run Android apps, an enhanced tablet and touch mode, gaming features such as Auto HDR and Direct Storage, and also closer integration with Microsoft Teams. All of this was announced in an objectively cool keynote with a large consumer focus. Although is it just me, or was Panos on the verge of crying throughout the entire video? And when you think about it, Windows has been part of our lives for 30 Five years, 30, that's incredible, right? 35 years. Well, I guess the family photos are a bit much, but uh, to each his own. Microsoft announced that Windows 11 will be available in autumn, that's fall, 2021, and developer betas are available as of the 28th of June. However, a leak of Windows 11 appeared on June 15th, and I have that leak. So, let me show you what we can see from this leaked version. But remember, this is technically pre-beta software, so not everything's gonna be available and it may be unstable. So here we are starting the installation of Windows 11. Now the installation is largely the same as that of Windows 10, so I'm gonna go through this very quickly. And we see the familiar Windows setup screen asking us for our language, time and currency, and keyboard. And again, if you've ever installed Windows 10, this is going to seem very familiar. Now here I'm asked for which edition of Windows I have. Now, <laughs> this is a Windows 11 leaked edition. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to choose Windows 11 Pro. So the installation is almost complete here. Okay, so uh, this is a brand new setup screen that we can see here uh, asking us about our initial setup. So first we'll select the country or region. I'm actually trying to press M here to select Malta, but for some reason this list isn't auto-scrolling. Uh, it also isn't very obvious that there's a scroll bar. Then again, I haven't installed the graphics driver yet, so perhaps that's the reason for that. Right, keyboard input method, some nice new graphics there on the side. And do I want to add a second layout? That's interesting, and at this time, I don't. Of course. How would you like to set up this device? So we can choose personal or for work or school. Again, uh, notice how the text isn't displayed correctly, but again, this is very low resolution. And apparently this leaked version of Windows can also only be installed on a VM. Anyway, I'm going to sign into my Microsoft account here just to make sure I enable all the features uh, that I can show you. And I can authenticate straight away using the Microsoft Authenticator. Okay, so now I'll create a pin. Of course, if I had a laptop or some sort of Windows Hello camera, uh, I'm sure I could set that up at this point. 
or maybe a biometric authentication such as touch or something like that. But on this VM, I'm going to go with a pin. Now we get the typical Microsoft questions about turning on location services, advertising ID and so on. Uh, honestly, I hope they change this. Uh, in the latest version of Windows 10, this is displayed as one screen and you can quickly tick what you want and don't want without having to go through this endless wizard. Uh, so hopefully they'll change that by the final release because that's too many questions. Now this is new. Select all the ways you plan to use your device to get customized suggestions for tips, tools and services. Okay, uh, well, I'm going to go balls to the wall here and select absolutely everything. Okay, accept. Okay, and this familiar, hi, we're gonna give you some nice text for you to look at whilst it gets set up. Oh, oh, hello, that's new. So apparently there's some sort of blooming uh, gradient in the background. Ah. That's actually quite interesting, quite a pleasant effect. Almost there. Oh, I'm really liking these new sound effects. And here we are uh, on the desktop. Uh, I need to adjust my resolution, of course. Uh, and immediately what seems to be the start menu has popped up. And I guess the most obvious thing, as you look at it, are the rounded corners. Uh, reminds me of a fruit-based operating system. Okay, so I've installed Parallels Tools and I'm now running at 4K. And this is the new start menu. Uh, as you can see, or maybe can't see that well, it is ever so slightly transparent. And uh, as you can see here from the apps, it's all very muted and uh, we have rounded window corners and so on uh, there is transparency you can see it there in the display of the calculator but it's very very subtle with this default windows light uh, theme uh, okay going to all apps here oh, okay it's just an alphabetical list of applications and starting to type in the start menu brings up the search panel here we have notepad with <laughs> with again with rounded corners uh, so yeah that's not something i'm used to but I, I must admit, it does look very nice. And oh, even the buttons are rounded. Let's go to settings and see what's changed here. Uh, so again, so far, very familiar with Windows 10. But again, remember, this is a very early version. Uh, you can see my resolution here. And uh, let's see what we can customize. And there are the colors, which again is the same as Windows 10, but then there are themes. And as you can see, the current theme is Windows Light. Let's look at what Windows Dark looks like. Oh, oh yes, yes. This is much more my cup of tea. And oh, oh yes, yes. That's very nice. A very nice version of the background there. And uh, the transparency is also a bit more apparent here in dark mode. Uh, compared to, as you can see here, compared to light mode, um, you can barely see the transparency in the taskbar when in light mode. Of course, transparency is one of the big features of Windows 11, as it was for 10, and as it was for 8, and as it was for 7, <laughs> and as it was for Windows Vista. <laughs> They've been talking about this transparent stuff since Windows Vista, but it is very nice here. Uh, let's look at the glow theme. And another dark theme, uh, but with some different colors and a different background. And uh, yeah, that's not bad. Desktop, not really my thing, but the color is quite nice. I think I'm going to stick to Windows Dark. OK, so let's take a look at this on-screen keyboard, uh, which is meant to be improved. Uh, mm. This doesn't seem to be it. Uh, I've actually searched in other places uh, for the new on-screen keyboard, and it did look different in the Microsoft Keynote. So maybe, maybe it's not in this version of the uh, software leak. Uh, this is just your normal on-screen keyboard. Of course, I'm using a mouse here, so it's, <laughs> it's, 
it's ridiculous, uh, but very useful, obviously, if you are in touch, such as in tablet mode. Okay, look at five. Oh, hello. Those are new icons for documents, pictures, the desktop, downloads, videos, and music. And uh, yeah, the documents folder looks pretty much the same. Although again, the icons for the folders are a bit different. So I'm going to open up a couple of windows here to try out the new uh, snapping or tiling mechanism. So I have Notepad, File Explorer, and I'm also going to open up Edge. And now if you uh, hover over the close button, uh, a new, uh, or actually over the maximize button, uh, you can see that a new menu comes up allowing you to snap them. So let's try this one. So I'll click on the left side, and as you can see, Edge moves to the left. And then I can select a window for the middle and a window for the right. And just like that, the windows are now tiled. Now this apparently also creates a tile group, uh, so you can minimize them and maximize them together. So let's just first change this page here so it makes more sense. Ah, that's more like it. And now if I minimize this window, you'll notice that just that window gets minimized. So pretty much what you would expect. Uh, and even clicking on the icon in the taskbar toggles an individual window between being maximized and minimized. However, if I then minimize all the windows uh, and I hover over one of them in the taskbar, you can see mm. that I can bring up all three of them. So as you can see, I can either bring up Notepad on its own here, or I can, uh, let me just close mm. this guy. I can go here, uh, or I can go here and I can bring up all three windows as they were tiled previously. And I can do this from any of the icons of the windows in taskbar. So either from Edge, File Explorer or Notepad in this case. So that's uh, an example of the tiling. Now let's go into the multiple desktop view or the workspace view. And I can create a new desktop here. And as you can see, it appears. And uh, these desktops are apparently quite independent from each other. So uh, I'm going to open another couple of programs here like uh, Paint and another instance of File Explorer. And um, we just resize this guy here. Okay, so now I can uh, tile these windows too. Uh, so I guess I'll choose this one here. And then I can place paint with my beautiful work of art there on the left hand side. So I have two desktops with tiled windows and now I can switch between them. So again, that goes back to my original desktop and clicking this icon again, uh, I can even add another desktop and switch to a brand new one. Now you'll notice some lag in this video, but do remember guys, I'm running this on a virtual machine. Uh, I'm gonna change the background for this desktop to one of the included ones, which is actually pretty nice. And what's interesting is that when we go back to task view, you'll see that it's only changed the desktop wallpaper for that desktop. Uh, the other desktops are the same, and so you can have kind of like a desktop for work, a desktop for school, a desktop for gaming, all with different wallpapers and with different window sets. Now pressing Alt-Tab in a desktop only shows windows from that one desktop. It doesn't show you the windows from uh, the other desktops that you have open. Now what about keyboard shortcuts? Uh, so... Uh, if I press Windows Tab, I get into this multiple desktops view uh, and then pressing Tab, I can switch between desktops using my cursor keys. So by default, the cursor keys go between Windows and a desktop, but pressing Tab switches the selection to the desktop list and I can use my cursor keys to switch between desktops. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure there are some other shortcuts. Uh, which I don't know about or which Microsoft still has to implement. But I think that's pretty useful. This is the widgets view. As you can see, it's chosen some default widgets to display, uh, some top stories and so on. And um, yeah, so would, let's look at the options for this widget here. Uh, switching it to Fahrenheit and Celsius. Okay, and clicking on it presumably will display it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It will display it in MSN uh, weather. 
Is MSN still a thing? Jeez. Um, so going back here, can I customize what widgets I have? Um, doesn't seem like it. Uh, so apparently um, you don't add the widgets yourself. Uh, you instead set your interests uh, here in this MSN page, uh, which, uh, which are the same interests you would see on your MSN homepage, whoever still uses that. So here, for example, I'm adding tech and science. Uh, and depending on my interests, widgets will be shown. So if I go back to the widgets panel now, I should see, I should see something related to science and technology. And yeah, there's something about Bitcoin. And there we go. Astronomers work out when first, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, okay, that makes sense. Though it would be nice to, uh, let's see if I can remove this. Oh, okay. Not interested in the story. <laughs> Hide Fox News. Yeah, that's more like it. Uh, so technically now I should stop getting articles from Fox News. Okay, so it's an AI based system. I can tell it what I like and what I dislike and it will automatically bring widgets up uh, for me. I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, on the one hand, it's nice to not have to customize it yourself. But on the other hand, I would like to customize it myself. So uh, we'll see how that works. Now, one of the touted features is integration with Microsoft Teams. So I've loaded Teams up here. Uh, it was not pre-installed uh, with Windows. OK, so this uh, kind of gives me the hint that the Teams integration is not in this leaked build of Windows. Uh, because as far as I can tell, this is just normal Microsoft Teams. Uh, there's no icon in the taskbar where I can start a Teams call immediately or have it integrated with the Windows desktop. Another big new feature is uh, a new version of the Microsoft Store uh, or the Windows Store. I don't know what they call it. No, it is the Microsoft Store. Uh, now, this always confused me, but as you can see here, it's not just apps. It's content inside apps. So there we see a Netflix series, um, just as if it were a piece of software. And this is the gaming tab uh, where you can get your free games as well as uh, possibly your Xbox Game Pass games. And strangely, whilst I was browsing this, uh, the entire desktop seemed to restart. Uh, but again, <laughs> I can't really hold it against Microsoft. This is very early version uh, of the system. In the new entertainment tab, uh, we can see a collection of different entertainment from different streaming platforms. Uh, so for example, here you can see content from Netflix, uh, as well as Disney Plus, and I'm presuming other services will be included. So if I click, for example, on that Netflix uh, ad, as it were, uh, I'm prompted to install the Netflix app. And presumably, if I had the Netflix app installed, clicking on the series would take me straight to it in Netflix. So a convenient way to discover content across your streaming services. This is the productivity tab uh, with productive productivity stuff for perpetual productivity, I guess. Um, curiously, I haven't seen any Android uh, apps yet, uh, which leads me to believe that maybe this feature isn't there yet. <laughs> and it's always funny to see Ubuntu in the Microsoft Store. <laughs> Anyways, let me see if I can find... Uh, no, there doesn't seem to be TikTok. Uh, TikTok app. Okay, hello. However, I believe this is the Windows version of TikTok and not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the Windows version of TikTok and not the Android one. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty sure that this app uh, or rather Android apps aren't available yet in this leaked build of Windows 11. Apparently, once they are available, you'll get them by downloading the Amazon App Store. Uh, which will now be available for Windows. Uh, and through there, you can then download Android apps, which will work natively uh, on your Windows desktop, either through Intel, uh, hybrid technology, or if your system is using ARM. Okay, so the Xbox app apparently got some updates. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Xbox Game Pass uh, is a monthly subscription service uh, that gives you access to AAA titles uh, on PC, uh, as well as Xbox, of course. And uh, the interesting thing is that apparently now from the Xbox app, uh, besides obviously buying games as well as playing your Xbox Game Pass games, uh, this will also be integrated into xCloud. 
meaning if you don't have a gaming system uh, you'll still be able to play uh, games on your system through the Microsoft Cloud servers. Now of course Microsoft recently bought Bethesda and so the entire catalog of Bethesda games is available on Windows including some classic titles here like the original Fallout, Wolfenstein, um, uh, Doom, <laughs> interesting and of course Doom Eternal and since this is Tech Guru wherever we see that we must click it. Now again this is nothing special to be honest I mean this is already there on Xbox Game Pass it's just interesting to see it in the new Xbox app on Windows 11. And presumably if you have an xCloud account and you don't have a powerful graphics card on your system you can play it on xCloud eventually not yet straight from the Xbox app. Uh, the app also has the social tab and this is pretty much as usual and then we have the store where of course we can purchase games directly from the Microsoft Store. Okay let's take another look at File Explorer here um, uh, so I, I quite like these new icons especially in dark mode now looking at pictures mode we can set our view uh, to extra large icons and oh oh yes yes this yeah, this does actually look quite nice especially on a high resolution display such as this and uh, you can see I have my desktop there uh, desktop wallpaper so I'll go ahead and set it as my desktop background and I can pretty safely say that this is the first computer ever running Windows 11 with the Tech Guru wallpaper so might be insignificant to you but <laughs> damn it if I like it another interesting thing I found here is the uh, Windows 11 um, getting started uh, guide, I guess. Uh, so let's see what they're focusing on in this release, at, at least for now. Let's make sure it, it, everything is set up the way you want it. Okay. The perfect place for your... Oh, okay, this is OneDrive, but you can see sporting those new icons. Uh, using Microsoft Edge, nothing new so far. And using your Android phone from your PC. This has nothing to do with the Android apps. A nice Windows 11 image there. It seems they're going with these uh, folding ribbons and so on. Anyway, so let's shut this guy down. And I'm not pre expecting anything new here. Um, so we can go ahead and shut down. Uh -huh. <laughs> right, apps that are preventing shutdown. Yeah, okay. So uh, yeah, this is still Windows. Um, so it would be nice if you could just not save stuff. Uh, shut down, but find it there when you then restarted the PC. But I guess no, or at least not yet. Now, there are some things I couldn't show yet, since they're not available or impractical to do on a virtual machine. One of these is the better tablet mode, with windows automatically arranging themselves in landscape or portrait mode, as well as improved gestures. I also couldn't run Android apps, as this feature is not available yet, but the Microsoft video did show TikTok running on the desktop. Similarly, Teams integration doesn't seem to be there yet, but it looks like Teams will now permanently live in your taskbar. Microsoft also gave a short demo of Auto HDR, a feature which seems like it applies HDR effects to existing games, even if they don't have built-in HDR. Besides the changes you can see, Microsoft claims Windows 11 offers improvements under the hood too. This includes waking up faster from sleep, faster browsing in Microsoft Edge and other browsers too, faster recognition in Windows Hello, uh, reduced power consumption and, what I'm looking forward to most, a 40% reduction in the size of updates from Windows Update and the ability for those updates to happen in the background. It's about freaking time, Microsoft, but I guess better late than never. I hope you've enjoyed this early look at Windows 11. If you want me to cover more about the latest version of Windows, let me know down in the comments below.